Hi triathletes, welcome back to another session with Triathlon Tesla, where today's focus will be on strength and mobility training. So I'll share with you guys 10 exercises that you can do at home for strength training, 10 exercises that's plyometric focused, and 10 exercises for mobility that you can all do in the comfort of your home. So stay tuned as I share them with you. To accomplish something extraordinary, one must have an extraordinary dream. Iron Man inspires us to reimagine our limits, to set our sights higher, to go farther than we ever have before. Iron Man is a statement of excellence, passion, commitment. It is a test of physical toughness and mental strength. Iron Man is about persevering, enduring, and being a part of something larger than ourselves. It shows the heights that can be achieved when we push beyond our boundaries and go the distance to earn the title Iron Man. So let's first start off with the strength training exercises. Exercise number one are referred to as the squat. You guys all know how to do a squat. You can stand arm width apart with your legs and then just go as low as you can into a squat position. Then the second exercise that you can do at home would be a lunge. So then you'll just move your one feet to the front so your legs will make a 90 degree angle at the bottom. You can also incorporate the squat and the lunge together. So you'll go down in a lunge, then come back up again, and then go down in a squat. So you can also combine the two exercises with each other. The third exercise, you can either do a push-up or a pull-up. For the pull-up, you can use a pull-up bar that you just put on top of one of your door handles and you can use that to do your pull-ups as well. So when you look at the push-ups, there are two ways that you can do your push-up. First, I'll show you the ladies version. So you'll go down on your knees and then your arms would be shoulder width apart again. And then you'll just go down in your push-up all the way down and then all the way up. Make sure that when you do a normal push-up, that your back is straight and then there's no arching in your back. So then you just go down in your push-up again and then come back up again. The fourth exercise is called an arm curl and you can do that with whichever weight you feel comfortable with. So you can do it one arm at a time, first the left and then the right arm. Just make sure that you do not arch your back when you do this as this will defeat the purpose of the exercise. And then the fifth exercise you can also perform with weight that's specifically focused on the arms. So first off, once again stand about shoulder length apart with your legs and then take two weights in your arms that you feel comfortable with. First off, you'll take the weights all the way shoulder width apart, then turn your arms, go to the outside, come back in, again turn your arms, come back in and then go up. Come down again, go out to the front, turn your arms, go sideways, go back in. So you can do this as well for some arm exercises. The sixth exercise is referred to as a wall squat. So just go anywhere where you have a wall and then in the sitting position, just go down and bend about 90 degrees. So you'll be sitting across the wall. To make this a bit difficult, you can have weights in your arms to make it more difficult. And then the next exercise that you can do is a deadlift. So for that, you'll need a deadlift bar with some weights on. You need to go down in a squat and I'll just pull it up to waist level. As it's no use pulling it up across your head as we're not doing weight lifting. So for that, go down, grab your bar at the handlebars, push out your butt and then just pull it up. Then once you're done, then just go slowly and control down again. Then the eighth exercise I'll refer to as V sit. So once again, take a weight that you feel comfortable with and then just lean a bit backwards, put your legs up from the ground and then just take the weight from side to side. And then you need to try and have your core activated while you do this. And then the ninth exercise is called the ball throw. So you can take a weight ball that you use specifically for weight training then just find a wall and then go down in a squat position and as you come up, you need to throw the ball against the wall. And then when you catch the ball again, you need to be all the way down in the squat position. And then for the 10th exercise, we'll just go and do a chair dip. So you can also use a chair for this, but I'll just use my box jump. So once again, take your butt off the chair or the box and then have your arm shoulder width apart again. And then just sink as deep as you're able to go and then control up again. Once again, you can make this a bit difficult and put some weights on your legs as well. So that will be the 10 strength training exercises that you can perform in the comfort of your own home. So let's move on to the plyometric exercises. Once again, I'll give you 10 of them that you can do in the comfort of your own home again. 
So first, let's start off with a box jump. You can see there's different heights, so please find the one that suits you best. You can also do this on a stepper if you're not comfortable with jumping this high. So if you have found the correct height for you, once again, this would be an explosive movement. So you need to dig deep and then jump onto the box. This will also give you some strength when you do your running as well. So first, stand shoulder width apart again next to the box. Then go down in a squat and then jump onto the box. So you'll go down, put your arms to the back and then you'll take the jump and then stand up again. And then you can just step down normally. The second exercise, that's also a plyometric exercise that you can do at home. You can either do it with your bed or a chair or the box again. It's called the Bulgarian split. So one of your legs would be at the back of the box or the chair or whatever you use at the back. And then you just need to make sure that when you go down that your body stays straight and your knee doesn't go to the inside and you go down to a 90 degree angle. So you'll go down and then you'll come back up again. You can also use weight in your arms if you want to make it a bit more difficult. Just remember to do it on both legs as well. The next one is called an X jump. That's where you need to find an X on the ground. So you can either use some tape or you can use the tiles of I have over here. And the only thing that you do is you'll jump from side to side, front to back, and then cross over to each side as well. You can do 10 of each and then move on to the next one. So you'll do one, two, until you reach 10, and then you'll go front to back. One, two, three, until you reach 10 again. And then cross over, you'll jump cross over as well. And then remember the other side as well. So jump cross over there as well. And then you can do 10 of each of that exercise. The next exercise is called the burpee and there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either do the normal burpee or you can walk it out. Some people like to have a push up at the bottom as well. It doesn't matter as long as you do the burpee. So I'll first show you the walk out method. We'll start off in a push up position and then you'll just walk it out with a jump at the end. If you want to do the normal burpee, it will be a fast exercise. So go down in a push up, legs out, back up, and then jump up again. And that will be the different methods that you can do your burpees. The next exercise is called the kettlebell swing. For that you'll need a kettlebell. This is a 6 kg but you also get different weights in them as well. So you'll take your kettlebell, stand about shoulder width apart with your legs, have the kettlebell in your arms, go down in an almost squat position, and then you'll just use your momentum to throw it back and come up 90 degrees when your legs are straight. So once again, go down in the squat position to the back, front, down, up, down, up, and that's called a kettlebell swing. For the next exercise, you'll need a yoga ball and two weights as well. So once you have your yoga ball and the two weights that you need, you'll just roll back until your shoulder blades are on the middle of the ball. You'll have your two weights. Once again, you'll go up, twist the weights, go down to the sides, come up again and then go down. So up, twist your hands, go to the side, go back up, twist your hands back and go down. This exercise would just help you to engage your core and your back or on a surface that's not that constant. So you need to engage your core to stay straight on the ball. The next exercise is called side leg raises. This will help you with some hip stability. So for that you can just go down on the ground, lie on your one side, and then have your shoulder and your arm about 90 degrees and your body straight and you can use your one arm in front if you don't have that much balance and the only thing you need to do is keep your legs straight and then just raise your legs to the side you can also make this a bit difficult if you raise from the ground and then once again you can lift your legs like that as well so that's two different methods that you can do side raises to incorporate some core stability as well as hip flexor stability. The next exercise is called the step up runner and for that you can either use your box jump or a stepper again. We'll just do a normal step up like this, opposite hand and arm when you step up to the stepper or your plyometric box. So once again I'll use the box. I'll first start off with my right leg. So my right leg will be on the box and then I'll use my left arm to drive. So once again I'll use my left arm to drive up and then I'll just go down again and then up and then just down again so this will just give you some stability again and help you strengthen your legs and your hips for the next exercise we'll do a jumping jack and then you just stand wherever you are and your arms and legs will around and just jump just for one, two, three the 
last exercise, you can also perform on a chair or on the box jump again. For that, all you need to do is just sit on the chair or the box jump and then just stand up. So that will just help you engage your core while you stand up as well as your glute muscles that we don't use that often. If you want to make it a bit difficult, you can try this on one leg. So once again, sit nice and firmly on the chair, use your one leg and then stand up as well. So have your one leg and then just stand up. Go down again and then just stand up again. Just make sure that you do not let your knees swift to the inside as then you're not using the correct muscles. You also need to do that on the other leg as well, so make sure that you do both legs when completing this exercise with only one leg. And the last three exercises will focus on mobility and that will help you engage the right muscles so we can strengthen them for our triathlon as well. So for the first exercise, once again you'll need a yoga ball to perform this exercise on. And once again there's two ways you can perform this. First you need to put your elbows and your arms on the medicine ball or yoga ball. And if you want to make it easier, you can stand on your knees with your back straight. Remember not to push out your butt or to have an arch in your back. So for this exercise, you only need to roll out your arms and come back. Roll out your arms and come back. Once again, if you want to make it a bit difficult, you'll stand in a normal push-up position. And then once again, roll out and come back. Roll out and come back. This will teach you some core stability and also have you engage the oblique muscles on the side. Some stomach muscles that we tend to skip on when you do our training. And then for the second exercise, you'll need your ball again. It's called a Swiss ball jackknife. So you'll start out in a push-up starting position and then just bring your legs in and then back out again. The important part here again is don't take your legs out or let your back arch. You need to have straight back and then just pull in and push out again. For the next exercise, you can either use a half medicine ball or your foam roller to perform this and then a weight or a bottle. So first off, I'll show you how to use the medicine ball and then the foam roller if you do not have a medicine ball. So let's start off. First put your weight about half a meter away from you and then with one leg stand in the middle of your medicine ball. Once you've found your weight, you'll go down with your opposite arm and then touch the weight and then come back up. So this will also help you engage your core and when you come up, you'll use your glute muscles. Once you've found your balance, you can go down, touch the weight of the bottle and then just come back up again. So go down, touch it and then just come back up again. And that will be one movement. So you need to do this on both legs as well. And then if you don't have a ball, you can use your foam roller. Have your leg on the foam roller, find your balance and then go down, touch the bottle, whatever you have and then just come back up again. So go down, touch and then come back up again. You'll feel the burn in your glute muscles and you'll use your glute muscles to come back up again. For the next exercise, you'll need a balancing ball, a yoga ball, and two weights, and it's called a vertical row on the ball. So for that, get down on your ball. Once you've found your position on your ball, make sure that you engage your core, and then you will just lift your one arm, and then your other arm, and then the other arm again. And just make sure that your butt is not sticking in the air, or that your back is not on. The fifth exercise is called a mountain climber. For that, you just need to go down in a push-up position, and then just tuck in your knees. So once you have your push-up position with your arm shoulder width apart, just go cross over opposite leg. Remember, not to have your butt in the air, or have your back arch. You need to be straight, cross over to the opposite side, and that's called a mountain climber. The next exercise is called the hip bridge. For that, you need to lie flat on your back, and will use your legs. This will also engage your core, as well as your glutes and your hamstrings. So once you've found your position on the floor, you can just raise your butt from the ground and then just go up and down. This will help you engage your core as well as your glutes and your hamstrings. If you want to make this exercise a bit more challenging, once again, when you're in the hip raise position, you can raise your one leg and then just go up and down with your one leg. So this will just isolate the one leg and it will be a bit more challenging than just doing the normal hip bridge. The seventh exercise would be a plank routine. So for that, you can either use a clock or a stopwatch to, to tell you when you need to turn over to the other side. So first, you can perform a plank on your knees. If you're not strong enough, just remember not to once again put your butt up in the air or to arch your back, but to have it straight. Or if you want to make it a bit more difficult, you can stand up on your toes as well. So you can roll this position for a while 
and this is called a plank. But for this exercise, we're going to take it one notch higher, so we'll move on to the side and we'll stay on a side plank for a side plank for 10 seconds, then go back down in the plank for another 10 seconds, then move on to the other side for 10 seconds, and then just go back down in the plank again. When you're on your side, just make sure that your hip is not dropped and that it's 90 degrees. This exercise also focuses on the core as well as the hip flexors that we do not exercise that much. The next exercise is called stick ups. For that you need a wall to perform and this is just to loosen up your shoulder muscles as we triathletes tend to swim a lot. So first find a wall, once again go down in your sitting position, take your arms to the wall and then just move them up as high as you can. You will feel the stretch over here as well as at the back of your lats. So this is also a very nice stretch to do if you have tight shoulders or lats. And then the ninth exercise would be side touches. We also use this exercise to engage our obliques. For this exercise you also need to be on the ground and have your legs raised a little bit. So for this exercise we'll go from side to side trying to touch our ankles. So you can lift up your neck a little bit, but try and keep it as low as possible. So let's start. We'll go one, one, two, two, three, three. So you can complete this a couple of times as well, and you'll feel your obliques muscles working while you do this exercise. And then for the last exercise, we can also stay on the ground. We'll do the opposite leg and hand raise. So you'll stand in the dark position, arm shoulder width apart, and then the only thing you need to do is you need to raise the opposite leg and the opposite hand. This will also engage your oblique muscles. Once again, just remember not to arch your back or to have it rounded. You need to have a straight back and then just raise the opposite arm and opposite leg. So once again, this is a very good exercise to engage your oblique muscles as well as your core muscles and glute muscles. The muscles that we try athletes tend to skip on training. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this has helped you to have some exercises that you can perform in the comfort of your home. I'll also upload the strength, mobility and plyometric exercises separately onto the website so you guys can go and watch them there separately as well. So please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Facebook group as well as Instagram on Triathlon Tessa and the website is up and running. You guys can find it at www.triathlontessa.com.